Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, you are most welcome. And on this channel, I teach mathematics, biology, science, and also revise past examination papers. So today's lesson is on acids, bases, and salts. So this lesson is actually a revision. The revision that I want to revise with you, a quick one on acid, bases, and salts so that you may understand some few points that I needed to be known on this topic all right so you know science is universal so it doesn't matter whichever country of the world you come from whether you come from the united states you come from uk you come from canada australia basically science is just the same so going through this lesson you understand something from this lesson that will be applicable to your country all right so let's start by looking at what an acid is all right so by definition Acids are substances that produce hydrogen ions as cations in aqueous solution. All right, so when you have a substance and then it is put in aqueous solution and then it produces hydrogen ions as the only positively charged ions, then that substance is considered to be an acid. Uh, for instance, if we have a container of water here and in this container, we add a substance and then these hydrogen ions that are positively charged are produced. Then this solution which has been formed here is an acid. Then the substance that was added to the water is said to be acidic. All right, so let's move a bit and look at what a base is. All right, so bases are metallic oxides and the hydroxide including ammonium hydroxide all right so basically what we are saying bases are metallic oxides and the hydroxides including ammonium hydroxide so what it means here is that if a metal is burned in oxygen to form a metal oxide then that metal oxide is actually a base also if a metal is dissolved in water and it forms a metal hydroxide then that solution that has been formed is actually a base all right so even ammonium hydroxide has been known to be a base so that's how it is all right so now soluble bases are called the alkalis so soluble bases are called the alkalis so if a base is added to water and then it is able to dissolve then that base is known as an alkali as well so alkalis what are they so alkalis are bases that produce hydroxide ions as anions in aqueous solutions so if a base is added to water and then it produces hydroxide ions as the only negatively charged ions then that substance that has been added is said to be a soluble base and it's an alkali all right so let's say we have a container here of four water to which we add a substance and then these hydroxides ion are produced this hydroxide ion then the substance that has been added to the water can be said to be basic or alkaline all right so this solution which is formed can be said to be an alkali solution all right so let's move a little bit and look at this other important concept known as the ph so what is the ph so we say it is the power of hydrogen ions all right so it is the power of hydrogen ions let's say acids have high potential of hydrogen ions so acids have high potential of hydrogen ions so what does this mean it means that what causes acids to be acid it is because of the hydrogen ions they have they have actually a lot of hydrogen ions uh, substances that uh, produce hydrogen ions as the only positive recharged ions are actually known as the acids it's only acids that when they are in aqua solution produce hydrogen ions as the only positive recharged ions so uh, what gives acids the characteristic to be acid is actually the hydrogen ions that they produce when they are in aqua solutions so uh, uh, in the same way 
bases have a high potential of hydro hydroxide ions so bases have a high potential of hydroxide ion so what it means basically here is that it, uh, what causes a substance to be a base it is actually the hydroxide ions that substance have so um, the hydroxide ions give the bases their characteristics so for a substance to be a base it must be able to produce hydroxide ions when it is dissolved in a aqueous solution all right that base which is able to dissolve in water to form a solution is actually now known as an alkali so let's say um you have ph values on a ph scale as shown below here uh, actually a ph scale is a scale of ph values ranging from 0 to 12 it shows the value of hydrogen ions from 0 to 14 so we are drawing a ph scale here let's say we have a line here and another line here and uh, we label this as 0 the beginning then this middle line as 7 and then this last line as 14 so the values range from 0 to 14 all right so on the left of 7 going to the left of 7 the value of hydrogen ion decreases and this means that the acidity of the substance increases so the acidity of the substance increases or substances with the pH lower than 7 are actually acidic all right so also moving from uh, uh, 7 to the right of 7 then here the value of hydroxide ion increases so since the value of hydroxide increases from 0 going this side then eh? the alkalinity of the substance as well increases which means that eh? um, uh, substances that are alkaline have got the pH value greater than eh? 7 All right so let's look at it a little bit deep, deeper here so what we are saying here is that the lower the pH value the lower the pH value here the stronger the acid and vice versa so <clears throat> so these numbers are moving from 0 to 7 so we are saying when you are moving from 0 to I mean from 7 going to 0 the values are actually decreasing until you reach 0 so the uh, the lower the pH value then the stronger the acid then the higher the pH value then the weaker the acid all right so this value 7 here actually represents the pH value of uh, the pH value of 7 is for a neutral substance so the pH value of 7 is for a neutral substance so substances which are not acid and not bases have actually a pH value of 7 all right so guys if you are getting value in this video Please give it a like and let me also know in the comment section you know you are family and you always encourage me very much when you give me positive feedback in the comment section and I always enjoy it and I, I always make sure that I respond to each and every comment because you and I have become a family and whenever you want materials like I've done to some of you you can actually let me know in the comment section if you want some materials for mathematics some materials for physics some materials for chemistry you can make me know in the or you can let me know in the comment section so that i can help you with some because we are family i'm here to help you so that you also make it in life all right so we are saying the ph value of 70 is for a neutral substance so conversely what we can learn here is that the higher the pH value the stronger the base and vice versa so from 7 going to the right the values of the pH begin increasing so the higher the pH value 
then the stronger the acid, I mean the base and also the lower the pH value, the weaker the acid. So moving from 7 going to 14, these uh, substances here are actually acidic or I mean alkalinity. Alright, so I hope you are getting something. Alright, so let's now move a bit and look at the physical characteristics of acids. So we are now going to look at physical characteristics of acids. So what are they? So these are characteristics of acids that we see when we interact with acids physically. What do we see um, in acids? So number one is that eh, they have a sour taste. So acids have a sour taste, which simply means that any substance that tastes sour is, is, a, uh, is suspected to contain some acids in it. Then the other, uh, the other characteristic of acid is that uh, they are corrosive. So acids are corrosive. That means that they wear out uh, substances on which they fall. All right. For example, if some acids drop on your cloth, your cloth is likely to corrode. All right. Even your skin is likely to be bent. The, that is a characteristic of uh, acid. Then the other characteristic is that they have a pH value less than 7. So they have a pH value less than 7. That's how it is. So acids have a pH value of less than 7 as you saw when we are talking about the pH. Then the other thing is that they turn blue litmus paper red. So acids turn the blue litmus paper red. So there is a litmus paper which is an indicator that is used to determine whether a substance is neutral, acidic, or basic. So there are so many types of indicators. We have red litmus paper, we have blue litmus paper, methyl orange, phenolphthalein, bromothymo, uh, bromothymo blue. Uh, these are some of the indicators which are there. We have also universal indicators. So what it is is that a blue litmus paper, if it is dipped in a solution containing acid then that blue litmus paper changes color to red and that's how we know that the solution is an acid all right so let's move and look at the chemical characteristics of acids all right so we'll start with the first one which says that they react with reactive metals such as the maziti metals to form a salt and hydrogen gas so this characteristic is telling us that Acids react with the reactive metals such as the maziti metals. What are the maziti metals? These are uh, MO for magnesium, A for aluminium, Z for zinc, I for iron, T for tin. So these are the metals that would react with the acids to form a salt and hydrogen gas. So the general uh, equation here is that if you have an acid, you react it with a metal, then it should give you a salt and hydrogen gas. So this is what you have to keep in mind or you have to memorize at, your, at the back of your memory that acid react with metals to produce salt hydro, uh, plus hydrogen gas. So for instance, let's say we get a metal magnesium then plus um, an acid let's say we have hydrochloric acid so this is magnesium this s stands for solid magnesium being a metal it is in solid state then plus being reacted with the hydrochloric acid so hydrochloric acid is in aqueous state solution form so when these two react we are told they should form a salt so which salt it will be magnesium chloride aqueous plus hydrogen gas which is h2g for gas all right so uh, this formula actually is not balanced you can put a two here to balance it i did forget to put a two there to balance this equation all right so what we are saying here again is that the same acids again are uh, they react with a base or they react with bases 
to form a salt and water only. So acids also react with bases to form salt and water only. So what we are saying in this general equation is that if you have an acid, you react it with a base, then it should give you salt plus water. That's what they do acids. When they are reacted with the bases, they have to give you the salt and the water. Alright? So I hope guys you are getting value in this video. If you haven't given me a like, please family, let's support one another. Give me a like and it will to help this video go a long way in the YouTube algorithm. I mean, the YouTube algorithm would do suggest this video to even more people to watch it based on the like that you are going to give it and also the comments that you are going to make in the comment section that's how youtube works and my channel is going to grow and will grow together because it will give me the morale to continue doing what i'm doing thank you very much so let's now we pick the actual acid that should react with the base to form a certain salt and the water. So let's pick hydrochloric acid in aqueous plus a base such as sodium hydroxide aqueous. When these two react, we are told it should form a salt. Which salt should it be? So it should be sodium chloride aqueous plus water H2O liquid. All right so again we can also give another example let's say hydrochloric acid can react with another base so this one we give is sodium hydroxide but we can get magnesium oxide also as a base now this one is solid because it's not the hydroxide so it is solid so this one when they react, it will give us magnesium chloride aquas plus water as usual. Alright, so this one we can balance it by putting a 2 here. Alright, so now let's look at uh, another chemical characteristic of acid. So the other chemical characteristic of acid is that uh, they react with the carbonates form salt water and the carbon dioxide gas so if you have an acid you react it with a carbonate then it should form how many things three salt water and the carbon dioxide gas so our general formula is that if you have an acid you react it with a carbonate then it should definitely give you a salt plus carbon dioxide plus water so these are the things you have to memorize whenever you see a carbonate reacting with an acid then these are the three products that are formed so let's say we have hydrochloric acid uh, aqueous reacting with the carbonate let's say we have calcium carbonate a common carbonate we know or limestone so this is in solid so this hydrochloric acid when is reacted with calcium carbonate it should form a salt and which salt calcium chloride so it will be calcium chloride aqueous plus <coughs> excuse me carbon dioxide which is c or two gas because it will be gas plus water which is h2 or liquid so mind you in all my equations that I'm writing I'm putting these as a state symbols to show you in uh, to show you the state in which the substance is so like when we say hydrochloric acid aqueous that means hydrochloric acid is in aqueous state or in solution form when we say calcium carbonate s solid that means this calcium carbonate is solid it can be powdered or it can be in a big big particles right so these two when they react they form calcium chloride 
plus i mean aqueous because it will now dissolve in water then there will be some bubbles of carbon dioxide that will be seen because it's a gas so the gas will come out as bubbles then plus eh, water so this water is what will cause the calcium chloride to be aqueous because water and this calcium chloride they will be in the same container where this reaction uh, is taking place all right so we can balance this equation by putting a two here all right so let's quickly move and look at it, the physical characteristics of bases so we are now looking at physical characteristics of bases so the first physical characteristic of bases is that they have a slippery feel so bases have a slippery feel when a substance is base is basic in nature when it is held it feels slippery so in this way we can in this case we can assume also soap to be basic to 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 contain a base in it we can uh, consider okra to contain some bases in it because it is actually slippery all right then the other characteristic of bases is that they have a bitter taste so bases have got a bitter taste so maybe some fruits that taste bitter are, uh, can be considered to contain bases then another characteristic is that bases uh, they turn red litmus paper blue so the red litmus paper when it is dipped in a base then it must change to blue that is how we know the base is a base but if it doesn't then it is not a base then the other characteristic is that they have a ph value greater than seven so you noticed from seven going upward its bases so bases have a ph value greater than seven all right so now let's move and look at chemical characteristics of bases so we are here now looking at chemical characteristics of bases all right so the first characteristic of bases is that bases react with acids in a neutralization reaction to form a salt and water only so when uh, a base reacts with an acid they should form a salt and water only and this reaction is called a neutralization reaction so what we are saying here is that if we have a base uh, plus an acid it should give us a salt plus water all right so this two must uh, be memorized or be mastered for you to be able to understand the characteristics of acids so just as i said this knowledge that you're learning here is actually secondary or basic in nature so whether you are in usa you are in uk you are in canada australia german all those english speaking uh, countries if as long as you're able to get what i'm teaching here this knowledge will help you to understand what acids and bases are all right so let's say we get sodium hydroxide as a base in aqueous form plus let's say we pick a nitric acid here also in aqua so this is the formula for nitric acid so these two when they, they react they should form a salt by this uh, in this case they'll form uh, sodium nitrate aqueous plus water in a liquid all right so what we are saying is that um this reaction here is called a neutralization reaction a neutralization or a neutralization reaction is a reaction in which an acid reacts with a base to form a salt and water only so that's what a neutralization reaction is it is a reaction in which an acid reacts with a base to form a salt and water only All right so let's move on and look at another 
chemical characteristic of bases. So another chemical characteristic of bases is that bases react with the ammonium salts to produce a salt, ammonium gas, and the water. So you see, so bases also react with ammonium salts to produce a salt, ammonium gas, and the water. So let's say if we have a base, then we react it with an ammonium salt. So definitely it should give us a salt again, then it should also give us ammonia gas and also give us water. All right. So let's say we pick sodium hydroxide and say aqueous glass. Let's say we pick ammonium chloride. Let's say this ammonium chloride is in aqueous. All right. So that will mean that when these two react now, they will give us a salt which will be sodium chloride aqueous plus ammonia gas which is NH3G plus water H2 or liquid. All right. So take note, equations are very, very important, guys. All right. I haven't done a video on my channel to teach how to derive. Uh, equations but I have a book that I've written myself a good book if you're interested in it I can sell it to you so that you can learn because it is written in an easy to read way that even without me as long as you're able to read and understand English you can read beginning from introduction to chemistry up to how to write ionic equations all right, and chemical bonding, metallic uh, covariant, uh, uh, electrovariant or ionic bonding, all that atomic structure, electronic structure is in that book, written in an easy to understand language. All right, so if you're interested, you can also let me know. But if you are maybe from USA, you are from UK, you are watching this video, you can click on the link below because I just uploaded one of my uh, my book, the same one, on the Amazon. So you can go on Amazon and then you can try to read the book or on Amazon Kindle. Alright, so let's move a bit and look at the sorts now. Alright, so let's look at the sorts. So what is a sort? So we are saying a salt is a substance formed when the hydrogen ion of an acid is partially or fully replaced by a metal ion or ammonium ion. So take notice every time a definition is given, you need to memorize that definition and understand because the concept of each and every topic lies in the definition. So when they're saying a salt is a substance formed when the hydrogen ion of an acid is partially or fully replaced by a metal ion or ammonium ion. So basically what they're saying, if you have an acid, then in that acid you have, you know, this hydrogen ion. If that hydrogen ion gets replaced with a metal hydrogen ion gets removed in the place of hydrogen ion a metal is placed then that new substance formed is called a salt so it could be a metal replacing the position of hydrogen or it could be ammonium ion that is what is being said in this definition then they're saying the replacing can be partially or fully so sorry sorry here i didn't notice so this one is off so i'm reading as or oh, it's supposed to be or oh. so when we say a salt is a substance formed when the hydrogen ion of an acid is fully or partially i mean is partially or fully replaced by a metal ion or hydrogen ion that's how it's supposed to read all right so so what we mean here is that if we have let's say this base here 
reacting with an acid which is nitric acid and then we know in this nitric acid there's this hydrogen here so if this hydrogen is replaced and then we have an sodium nitrate aqueous plus water then this one we are saying it is a salt so what has happened this sodium as a metal it has replaced the hydrogen here to form sodium nitrate so that's how a salt is formed when that hydrogen ion in an acid is replaced its position is taken here like it is shown now here it is showing now that the sodium has already taken that position it's there then this hydrogen here now with the OH here or the hydroxide they join to make two hydrogen and that water so these are the two hydrogen here and I mean that oxygen here then they form water so this is what happens so here we are saying a base plus an acid will definitely give us a salt and a water this is what this reaction is so another example we can look at is let's say we have magnesium then this magnesium solid is getting reacted with the hydrochloric acid aqueous so make sure what will happen this magnesium will come and sit where there's hydrogen here so it will form magnesium chloride aqueous plus hydrogen gas all right so what has happened here is that this hydrogen has been replaced with the magnesium so this equation is not balanced you can balance by adding a two here all right so what we are saying here we have a metal now plus um, an acid to give us a salt and a hydrogen gas yes so this one is a representation of how a metal is reacting with an acid and then replacing that remember we said acid react with mazit metals all right so mazit we said magnesium so magnesium with hydrochloric acid can form magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas all right so let's move a bit and have progress all right so we have looked at the fully replacement let me reverse a bit what we have looked at is fully so this hydrogen has been removed completely so now there is sodium hydroxide equally here this hydrogen completely removed to form magnesium chloride so now let's look at a situation where we have partial removal so let's say we have sodium hydroxide aqueous plus we have sulfuric acid aqueous then this one we know that this is an acid sulfuric acid so this sodium here must replace this hydrogen here now instead of removing all the hydrogen there are two here it just removes one and forms sodium hydrogen sulfate here aqueous then that one hydrogen removed combined with the OH to form water here so now this is a partial so this one removes this one partial so it hasn't removed everything it is a partial so this one is still a salt but to we'll say a base in this case is reacting with an acid to form this one an acidic salt or an acid salt plus uh, water here so this salt here we consider it to be acid i think because it still contains uh, hydrogen there all right so let's move and see how we prepare acids how we prepare salts we'll talk of preparation of salts so we are saying there uh, there are three methods of preparing salt so i didn't update here there are four methods for preparing salts here so we are saying there are basically four methods for preparing salts so we are saying number one titration or neutralization method so we have titration or neutralization 
method as a method for preparing sorts. Then we have another one called displacement method or filter and crystallization method. Then another one called precipitation or double decomposition method. Then another one is called direct synthesis method. So you see we have these four methods of preparing sorts. One, two, three, four. In my numbering, I didn't put a four here. All right. But there are four. So we have these four methods of preparing. And the reason why we have this is because of the nature of the reactants that can be used to form the acid, the salt, or also the nature of the salt itself. So, for example, here we are saying uh, these methods of preparing salts depend on solubility. On the solubility of the salt and the nature of reactants. So what we mean here is that solubility is the measure of the extent to which a substance dissolves in water. So the measure of the extent to which a substance dissolves in water is what we call solubility. So here we are saying are substances that have high extent to dissolve in water are said to be soluble while those that have a lower extent to dissolve in water are said to be insoluble all right so it is because of this nature so there are certain sorts are soluble and some sorts are insoluble so those soluble sorts will have their own methods of preparing them and those insoluble sorts also will have their own methods of preparing them so now in my next video i will be looking at how to prepare sorts all right so please make sure if you haven't subscribed click that red subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that youtube is able to send you a notification when i upload that video i'm talking about there are many of you here when i upload videos you don't see them because you haven't subscribed and turned on the notification. So if you haven't done so, please, just for support, you can just subscribe. It is free. You don't pay me anything. All right? Just subscribe so that you continue receiving updates of my new uploads. All right. So if you want to look at my book from Amazon, you can click on the link in the description below. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Until I see you in my next video, as for now, bye and please, peace.